الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين المنتخبين المنتجبين المظلومين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل بليشك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى عبائه في هذا الساقات وفي كل الساقات ولي محافظ وقائد مناصرة ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توى وتمتعه فيها طويلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم علي ما الحق والحق ما علي والحق يدور حيث ما دار علي صلوات بر محمد وعلي محمد اللهم صل على Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us this great opportunity. Today we are nearly ending day number 17 of the month of Ramadan. And uh, whatever we say and whatever we do to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be enough at all. For 17 days, Alhamdulillah, we didn't have any health problem, we didn't have any travel to do so there was nothing in our way so we can call that was an obstacle in our way alhamdulillah we came here we started in time today is our last lecture <coughs> uh, about Amir al-Mu'mineen al-Islam as the role model then we have got 18th 19th and 20, 20th of the Ramadan uh, three majalis coming for the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Obviously, what if you uh, recall the very first uh, lecture where I said that inshallah we're gonna go this way. So we didn't go that way because the great personality of Amirul Mu'mineen is not easy to describe. And if you try to open up one side of the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen, within that one side, there are so many characteristics, so many attributes, so many fazails of Amir al-Mu'mineen that you feel completely lost in them. Up to now, if uh, I ask myself, did I do anything? Well, it's almost about nine to 10 hours in those 17 days. But hardly I can say that we started only. Because end of the day, <coughs> the very first lecture was about <coughs> introducing Amir al-Mumneen al-Islam. It is still the introduction. We haven't touched that what the friends of Amir al-Mumneen, was the enemy of Amir al-Mumneen, was, was the Holy Prophet, what the wives of the Holy Prophet, what the Imams say about Amir al-Mumneen. We didn't touch any of them. But Alhamdulillah, at least we know that something started. It will give an initiative to the future speakers to come and go deeply into the life of Amir al mumineen Because when the Holy Prophet says, Inni tarikun thakalain kitab Allahi wa itrati ahla bayti, that I'm leaving you with two things. One is the book of Allah and one is my progeny. And the master of that progeny is Amir al mumineen so if someone is able to pick up a few of the pearls from the life of Amir al-Mumneen salam in that case, the person will understand rest of the personalities very easily. Because these are the glimpses of the life of Amir al-Mumneen salam Even Aimma says that among us, the most and high place after the Holy Prophet is Amir al Mu'minin and Bibi Sayyida. As because it's the last one, so <coughs> uh, just going before the end, that we divided the life of Amir al Mu'minin into few different stages. The very first stage was the first 10 years of Amir al Mu'minin life when he was born and up to uh, the prophethood of the Holy Prophet, when he announced his prophethood. So that was 10 years. And next 10 years when he was prophet and uh, Islam was facing such a difficulties, miseries and calamities within Makkah. 
Amir al Mu'minin, he was 10 or 11 years old boy when the Holy Prophet announced his prophethood. And for next 13 years, he was suffering with other Muslims. Then the first migration took place in the fifth years of Bitha. Bitha means the announcement of the prophethood. That was under the uh, guidance or supervision of Hazrat Jafar Tayyar, who's the elder brother of Amir al Mu'minin al Islam, towards Abyssinia or Habsha. Then the third uh, stage of Amir al-Mu'minin's life, the first one is 10 years, second one is 13 years, and the next one is another 10 years on the top from migration up to the demise of the Holy Prophet. Because there are cer certain circumstances, but bear in your mind these 10 years, and in those 10 years, the Holy Prophet had to uh, defend the Islam and to spread the Islam and uh, the Holy Prophet had to uh, indulge into 83 or 85 wars. Now those days, 85 wars, and if you divide by 10, it comes to 8.5 wars per year. And those days, transportation or traveling or moving from one place to another place was not that easy like we see it now. Now from here to London you want to go, it only takes about an hour from here to central London. If there's no traffic, you can even save another 10, 15 minutes. Or if you use train, and if there's a direct train, even less than an hour, you are in the center of London. But just think <coughs> that if you have to walk towards it, or you have, if you have to ride a donkey or a horse, then it's gonna take your whole day just for this little journey. And we see that 8.5 wars, that comes to about 40, 45 days, every 45 days in Medina for 10 years, the Muslims, they were fighting war. And for this war, they were losing lives, they were getting injured, they were losing the wealth. So they had so many problems. Only Allah knows if you just leave all the other miracles and all the other attributes and characteristics of the Holy Prophet aside, but if you just think that how he did manage these 85 wars and at the same time he was preaching Islam and he was sending the mass message uh, towards the Roman Empire, towards the Persian Empire, towards the Africa. Every place is with a messenger from the Holy Prophet with such a management. It's the peak of the management. We look into the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the life of Hazrat Nuh al Islam. 950 years of his life as a prophet, and only 50 people become Muslim. No, Zubillah, I'm not com com doing the comparison because that's the initial <coughs> stage of the Islam. But when we look into the life of the great prophet Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, and we compare only 23 years of the Holy Prophet's life. But within these 23 years, now you have minimum 2 billion Muslims available. And there are millions of people, they have got the tendency towards Islam at the same time. And this is again a kind of Islam as well. A person has got the tendency towards Islam, they are like Muslim in a sense, not Muslim with the Shahada. But the amazing part of the Holy Prophet is that within those 10 years and a war, little or big war, and some of the war lost for a long time. Some of the war which they lost so many lives from the Muslim side. But to manage these things, this is definitely a miracle. You can't perform these kind of performances unless you are performing miracles. So this was a miracle of the life of the Holy Prophet. Now, we come into the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Here we have 10 years, and the Holy Prophet had to fought 85 wars. Now here, Amir al-Mu'mineen comes into obvious Khilafa, 35th after Hijra, 18th of Zilhijjah, same, the day of Ghadir. That is the day when Imam al-Islam took the oath as the fourth Caliph. So from the uh, 35th after Hijrah, and bear in your mind, Zil Hijjah is the last month of 50, 35th after Hijrah. So basically 35th is gone. 
Now, 36, 1, 37, 38, 39, and the month of Ramadan of 40 after Hijrah. And I think Ramadan is 8th or 9th month of October. So roughly about 8th month, or maybe you can count it. So Now, if we say 4 years and 8 months of the time, the Khilafah time of Amir al muminin and in these less than 5 years time, he had three big civil wars, big battles, especially when it comes to the Battle of Sifin, that in the ground it lasts for 13 months. So now, Amir al muminin four years and eight months roughly. So basically 56 months. Out of 56 months, take away 13 months only in the ground. Then to prepare the army, to get all the ammunition of that time, weapons of that time, getting together, bring them people together, doing all the efforts. So at least minimum, minimum, you can say 20 months Amir Mumin was only indulged in the Battle of Safi. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to uh, the Battle of Jamal, the Battle of Jamal was fought in Basra, which is in Iraq. And Amir al muminin is in Medina, again in between, it's almost 1500 to 2000 miles, I don't know the exact distance, but it's a huge distance, especially when you are traveling on camels, on donkeys and on, uh, on your foot, or very few people with the horses as well. So again, this battle, I'm not sure what is the exact time, but it took such a time as well. Then there's another <coughs> big quarrel which occurred because of the end of the Battle of Sifin. Because of the end of, end of Sifin. That was the fitna of Kharajiya. In between there were number of months to settle down and to uh, overcome these problems. But Amir al not only overcome um, these problems, but then he had to fight another war against the Kharjim where it took another few um, weeks if not months so if we look into the life of Amir al-Mumneen Amir al-Mumneen alayhi salam had exactly the same difficulties which the Holy Prophet had in his life now these three wars and then you got the time which is very less obviously the Holy Prophet is the master of Amir al muminin alayhi salam. But the way Amir al muminin dealt with it, that is another miracle. And at the same time, Amir al muminin alayhi salam, he was making his point clear that what has actually happened to Islam. Now, Amir al muminin is on his deathbed or on his shahada bed. We have discussed few of the things uh, from his uh, final will or final advices to Imam Hassan Mustafa Islam and Imam Hussain al Islam, and the first one, if I just go through them quickly, I've already explained them. Imam al Islam says, "I command you, I command you all, my children and my family, as well as those who read my letter, so up to the day of judgment, to fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to regulate your affairs." and maintain your relation with other as I heard from your grandfather the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and his progeny he said maintaining your relation with other is better than the mustahab prayer and mustahab fasting so if you have a choice to do something for other people or if you have a choice to sit in the mosque and worship that is better so even though if you're doing at the calf at the calf you have to perform in the masjid but if you are in the Atakaf and you, someone needs your help, I gave you the example of the person who was accumulating with Imam Zaman, Imam Sadiq al Islam. And when this person was making gestures to call him outside, Imam said, Do you know this person? He said, Yes. He said, Go and listen to him. And he said, Imam, he's not from one of us, from the Shias. Imam said, Doesn't matter. He is Muslim. But even though if he's not Muslim, you have to go and you have to listen to that person. And the second one, do not forget about the orphans. And Alhamdulillah, we go through this. <coughs> Do not silence their cries 
uh, sometime and because when they are in need you give them something when they yell or cry you give them something and then you are completely switch off from them no don't do this always look after for the orphans for yatim aitam the third one he said do not forget about your neighbors and then he says amazing words as they are one of the as there's one of the commandments of your prophet and he is still recommended about them until we thought that he would make them inherit each other so he emphasized about his neighbors a lot and we went into the dua of bibi sayyida and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i gave a few examples yesterday so inshallah anybody want to uh, interested into that one you can see the lecture on 16th of the month of ramadan the number fourth one which we started that is a, about allah allah fil quran do not forget quran and don't let anyone beat you up in it so they are more successful now if we see in the world especially i did uh, bring this one point now alhamdulillah you know that our sunni brothers they're doing according to them this is a mustahab but i'm not going into the fiqh problem of salatu tarawi and i'm not favoring them either because anything which was not in the time of the <coughs> holy prophet that is a kind of innovation and what is the hadith about innovation that is one of a hadith which is within the shia and within the sunni book so they can see themselves but i just want to emphasize on one thing that when it comes to quran alhamdulillah among our sunni brothers they have got great reciters they recite beautifully alhamdulillah we have within shia as well but if we look at the ratio that is very high and yesterday if you remember i said one thing if there is a demand there will be a supply if you come to the shia community if you come to uh, the shia school of thought not community shia school of thought then you will see that you'll find such a great orators they speak very nicely and they have such a command on speaking describing and making some of the very deep points very easy and very easy to make other people understand those points you will see these things among the shias why because there is a demand there's a demand of khutbas but there there is less demand of that i'm not saying that they are right or we are right i'm not talking about here what my point is if there is a demand there will be a supply if there is no demand now when you go into the world market especially in the western society or other part of the world when you see this marketing marketing itself is not even a subject but now it become a subject or mba master of business or things like this you go slightly back even though within your tawziyal masail there is a chapter about business a person came to amirul mu'minin al islam he said i want to do a business amirul mu'minin said that have you read all the masail of business all the rulings about business and he said maula what's so important about that i will learn gradually or i will learn when i need it like we only open the tawzil masal when we need it no it's not the book which we only open when i need a certain ruling this is a book which we open up along with quran all the time because end of the day that is quran and this is the tafsir of quran from the fiqh point of view from the fiqh perspective because from the quran you do not understand quran say aqim as salat okay how to say salat we don't know now to go into the life of the <coughs> holy prophet if we just pick up salat for 23 years the companion this saw the holy prophet saying salat but still we have minimum five kind of salat some of alaikum salam rahmatullah some of the people they tie their hand some of the people they tie their hand on the belly some of them are above the belly some of the people they on their chest so, there are two of the sect within islam they do not even tie the hands that is uh, the follower of imam malik and we the shia we do not tie the hand and then we have so many problem about doing rafal rafatul yadain so when it comes to even the thing which the holy prophet practiced 23 years before the companion before the muslims but still they have this contradiction shall we tie that hands 
or shall we tie the hands on our chest or on our belly or slightly lower where should we tie our hands still there's a problem but alhamdulillah we have 12 imams but there is only one teaching they say exactly the same thing now tawziyul masail is basically a thing which is interpreting the fixed side of the quran so that's why we should be connected with that okay the next one when it comes to quran now alhamdulillah our sunni brothers they read beautiful quran but as i said yesterday that after the islamic revolution 1979 uh, alhamdulillah our great leader may allah raise his estate imam khomeini rahmatullah alay that he put spe special emphasis on the quran and i remember a uh, few years back <coughs> to read this that within the parliament of islamic republic uh, i'm not sure what's the exact figure somewhere around 500 people and out of 500 people there were 350 plus people they were hufaz e quran and now alhamdulillah there are so many people within uh, the shia islam they are memorizing quran because memorizing quran is a great great opportunity for us great bounty of allah subhanahu wa taala it's a great gift for allah subhanahu wa taala and the holy prophet says any heart is without quran this heart is like a run down house you can't live in it and heart is the place where allah subhanahu wa taala says it is my house you can't have anything so when you have the kalamullah the words of allah subhanahu wa taala within your heart so basically it's all from allah subhanahu wa taala and within your heart are the words of allah subhanahu wa taala inshallah taala if i go for two three a uh, hadith about quran and then inshallah taala uh we'll go for the next one say salawat please <clears throat> now one of the hadith which the holy prophet uh, said said qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he says nawru buyutakum nawru buyutakum that enlighten your house how bi tilawat al quran with the recitation of quran and then he said wala tattakhiduha quburan kama fuiltal fuiltil yahud wan nasara and don't be like the christian and jews of that time because they used to do all the worship within their ma'bad with their within their church within their synagogue within their temple they never used to do any worship even reading uh torah even reading bible in their house and the holy prophet said no when it comes to the recitation of quran and there's another hadith of the holy prophet that you say your farais your wajibat in the masjid with the jamaat but you say your nawafil in your house and enlighten your house with this one just one more hadith uh from uh, masum in the quran let me pick up okay now this hadith is from qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam man qara'a ashra ayatin fi laylatin lam yuktab min al ghafilin anyone who recites only 10 verses in the night that person will be not among the ghafilins ghafilins the person is a kind of ignorance it's a kind a person will be not from the ignorant ones if 10 verses how many how long does it take to read 10 verses you read surah inna anzalna fi lailatil qadr twice 10 verses are there or you read surah al fatih with seven verses and surah qul huwa allahu ahad and then there are few of the surahs that um, the prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala says that these are equal to one quran for example reciting surah qul huwa allahu ahad once the holy prophet says this is 33% of quran so you read recite three time that's one time quran but at least we should do this okay and then he doesn't stop here he doesn't wa man qara'a khamsina aya kutiba min adh-dhakirin and the one who recites 50 verses of quran 
in the night the person will be among these zakirin the one who remembers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lord there is one of the name of the holy prophet in the quran he said fazakir innama anta mudakkir lasta alayhim bi musaydir oh my prophet you do zikr and you are the zakir innama anta mudakkir that you are the one who remembers and make other people remember so a person who recite 50 quranic verses then the holy prophet says this person is like who is zakir of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then say waman qara'a waman qara'a miyata ayatin kutiba min al qanitin and the one who recite 100 verses from the quran that person is from qanitin Qanateen is one of the attribute of the Prophet. Qanateen is a person who is happy in all sorts of circumstances, whatever happened. But that person is happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete satisfaction, 100% tranquility. So the one who decides. Now, in the 30th Jews, which is start from Surah An Naba. In Surah An Naba, you got 37 surahs. 37 surahs in Surah An Naba. Um, in uh, 37 surahs in 30 Jews, and Surah An Naba is uh, number 78. You got up to 114 surahs. As far as I remember, I remember long time back when I counted how many verses in the 30th Jews. 455 or 65 verses. So please it might be one of them but it is 450 plus definitely how long does it take to read the whole 30th juice maybe 25 minutes because most of the surahs we know by heart anyway and once you know something by heart and this is four times more than the kanith the one who is completely happy with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala agajan bring quran into your daily life you try to use the quranic language as well for example if someone is going out and you say Aina tadhabu what does that mean? Aina means where tadhabu where are you going? these are the words from the 30th Jews or qalla no there is no way like we say in English bring these small words into your daily use and try to bring these words into your daily use a time is gonna come when the Oxford Dictionary has to bring these words into that mazat ke saath if you go if you open up oxford dictionary you will find the words like biryani chicken jalfrezi is it jalfrezi something like that and pulao as well so these all things are there why because we use these things in our menus in our restaurants and everywhere so now the people know and when they need to know the meanings obviously they go to google google tell them and then it comes into the dictionary and through the dictionary it goes to the big dictionary so one of the thing which we can do with the quran along with thousands of other things we try to make the language of the quran as a norm we use we start using with ourselves with your with inshallah with our wives with our children with other people Try to bring this language into your normal life. And you will see that with the blessing of that, you are learning a lot. I remember when, Alhamdulillah, when I was in Hoza, whatever I learned in five years about Arabic grammar in the Hoza, but after completing that course and coming into my practical life to open up the Quran and going into the Quran, I saw that, for example, if there are hundred stages of Arabic grammar, please listen to this word and it is really, it really encouraged me. If there are hundred stages in Arabic grammar to learn the Arabic language, obviously spoken language is a different thing. I'm talking about the language of Quran. So if there are hundred stages of Arabic grammar, you need to learn 75, 80, 90 or in some cases up to 100 level to understand the hadith or other literature from the Arabic side. 
بٹ ود ان دا قرآن اللہ سبان تعالیٰ ہارڈلی یوز ٹوینٹی اور ٹوینٹی فائیو پرسینٹ آف دا گرامر بٹ دا میریکل آف دس عربک گرامر از ود ان دیز ٹوینٹی فائیو پرسینٹ اف یو آر ایبل ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دس ٹوینٹی فائیو پرسینٹ یو آر ایبل ٹو لرن دا ریسٹ سیونٹی فائیو پرسینٹ بائی یور سیلف دیٹس دا بیوٹی آف دا قرآن فار ایگزامپل وی ہیو موفولوجی موفولوجی از علم صرف with one word if you know how to conjugate the word and if you have only one word within five minutes you can make minimum 226 sentences with one word with three letters for example jim lam and seen jalasa jalasa mean he said you make jalasa jalasa jalasu jalasa jalasa jalasata jalasna jalasa jalasuma jalasum jalasi jalasuma jalasuna jalasu jalasna 14 which are the most basic ones and 99% of the words doing words the verbs you made with these six chapters these are called sulasi mujarrad sulasi means three and mujarrad means there is no additional letter and you make with them there are six chapters then you have 14 chapters of sulasi mazidun fi i don't want to make you scared i just want to tell you what is the miracle of quran So you have six chapter, six chapter with one chapter you make hundreds of letters, hundred of uh, words and hundreds of sentences. You have six of them, then you have 14 Sulasi Mazid. And then you have Rubai, you have Khumasi, all together. To learn the complete Arabic grammar, you need to learn at least 44 chapter. Keep this 44 chapter in your mind. 44 chapter and then you got ilm nahab which is basically the ending case when to say muhammadun when to say muhammadan when to say muhammadin these are different cases so you need a lot of attention there as well but this morphology you have sulasi mujarrad minimum 6 then you have sulasi mazid mazidun fi some says 15 so some most of the people say 14 but say 14 6 and 14 20 then you have rubai the four letters one then you have khumasi the five letter one then mazidun fi and mulhik be mazidun fi don't worry about these things these all things are for those people they are learning deep 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 grammar but in the quran you only learn these six chapters which is sulasi mazid sulasi mujarrad and just four or five from the mazidun fi so comparing to 45 different chapter in morphology if you have a good idea of hardly 14 chapters all together you can translate the whole quran so 30 chapter you don't even have to go to there maybe there's only one or two word in the quran so my point here is that when it comes to the grammar obviously grammar made by the human beings and grammar is, grammar is always made after the language not before the language language come into existence before and then the grammar is made because grammar is is the rule the rules are made after the language this grammar is made by the human beings and they say you have to come up to level 100 to understand the hadith and arabic literature properly I'm just setting up an example But for Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you come to Quran and you know nothing. You are on ground zero or if you are on ground minus, you come to me and still you will get something from the Quran. You will not go empty handed because he is Ajwadul Ajwadeen, the generous of the generous. Whoever comes to his door and asks, he gives everyone something. Everyone. Nobody is empty handed. آغا جان الحمد للہ وی ہیو جسٹ کمپلیٹنگ ڈے سیونٹین اونلی تھرٹین ڈیز لیفٹ ان دس منتھ 
make this resolution for yourself make this program for yourself Agajan, the holy prophet gave us two things the kitab of allah the book of allah and the ahlul bayt just do not only stay up to the bio data of quran and bio data of ahlul bayt up to now we only learned the bio data of ahlul bayt how they behave that's why i picked up the seera seera is totally different seera means the way of life of amir al-mu'minin we did discuss all the battles of amir al-mu'minin khaybar hunain we discussed all of them we discussed satifa to a certain extent as well we discussed everything but i did not discuss from the historical point of view my point was only one that this thing came to imam ali al-islam how he behaved now his own killer abdul rahman ibn muljim is standing before him who just struck into the head of amir al-mu'minin with a poisonous sword when the doctor the tabib of that time he said ya ali it's only you who is still alive otherwise the one who get this strike like this and with this sorts of poison a person can't live for more than few minutes but amir al-mu'minin lived for three days and he was giving such a preaching in those three days this is one of them that amir al-mu'minin now this strike was in his brain his head was split open and they tightly they tied with a piece of cloth but look what is coming out from the mouth of amir al-mu'minin now go back to the history when someone says this holy prophet because he is sick and he is not able to say the proper things we say look at the slave of the holy prophet ali alayhi salam at that time amir al-mu'minin said several times but specifically that time he said saluni saluni qablan tafkiduni ask me before you lose me so the one who is on the deathbed is speaking like this how dare someone can speak before the holy prophet it's not about shia and sunni agajan every single muslim they love both the holy prophet all the muslim they love holy the holy prophet and our standard is the holy prophet whoever is loyal to the holy prophet we are the servant of those people whoever those people are and whoever stood against the holy prophet it doesn't matter if that person is my father i'm against my father it's not about sunni and shia and i would because alhamdulillah is going live i would request to my all muslim brothers and my non muslim brothers and sisters as well all the christians all the jews even the hindus and sikh you and we we all are from one god you and we we all are from one couple adam and eve we don't have absolutely any difference as a creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't have any difference as a human being you got the same pain we have got the same pain you feel exactly the same way we feel exactly the same way these are only the things from the zionists and when we say zionists zionists okay it's in israel no it's not only in israel look into yourself because zionists is an ideology it could be within me if i'm snatching the right of other people then i'm zionist if i am being oppressor or cruel to other people i am zionist nauzubillah so zionist is an ideology this ideology is openly with the jews at the moment semi openly within at least the machine, policy maker of america and some of the countries within the western society but this zionist ideology is within the islam as well how would you describe taliban and daesh these cruel people they're saying allah akbar and they killing other human being other muslims so agajan we need to understand the last one only two minutes left uh, so many things left but just the last thing imam ali al-islam he grabbed the hand off he was grabbed in th through this whole process he's had the hand of imam hassan and mustaba in his hand imam hussein is standing next to him then hazrat abbas and other sons and daughters of amir al-mu'minin and he said this beautiful word agajan this is the end of these 17 lectures today is the last one he said ya hassan ya hussein 
kunu khasman li zalim wa aunan lil mazlum that be the enemy of the oppressors the cruel and be the friend of the oppressed one the mazlum it doesn't matter if the oppressor is within us or outside we are against it and if the mazlum is within the muslim or shia or outside muslim and shia it doesn't matter if my enemy but if my enemy is mazlum my maula amirul mu'minin commands me to go and help your enemy even though he's enemy to you but he's mazlum at the moment that's why I look at the life of amirul mu'minin agajan end of the day success is only munhasir only muqayyad only within two things the book of allah and the progeny of the holy prophet wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin